Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Isn't it wonderful to have arrived at the big day itself, to actually here. And all we have to do now is worship and then go home and relax or whatever it is you do when you get home. Perhaps um, eat, be with people, watch telly, do just enjoy the day and know that God is with us. So welcome this morning. Do sit down a moment. Welcome. Um, welcome if you're visiting, if you are living in Froome and just come at Christmas, so that's fine. Or if you're visiting and you, you I don't know, welcome if you're watching online as well. Um, it's just good to be here this Christmas morning. <coughs> and thank you to everybody who's done so much to make this church look so beautiful. For decorating, putting the crib up, helping the services happen to create that, that atmosphere as well of, of worship and prayer that's been unfolding, um, not just through Advent and Christmas, but throughout the whole year, this, the community that is held together. Thank you, all of you, for your part in that. So let's stand and sing our first carol, O come, all ye faithful. And today is the day when we can sing all the verses. Sorry? All seven. Oh, I don't know if you want to sing all seven. Hang on. Just, one. <laughs> just a minute. Just. I so I've got a hymn book that's. Let's have a look. How many verses do you want? Who, who'll give me a, an offer? Four. <laughs> four, seven, then. One, two, hang on. Oh, let's, let's miss out um, four, four and five. Three, four, and five? Okay, so we'll sing verses one, two, six, and seven. That's easy, isn't it? One, two, six, and seven. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. This is the moment. This is the day of gladness, the rebirthing of love. Listen, listen for the sounds of joy. Here, here among our everyday places, here among our ordinary lives is the emerging of grace. Watch, watch for the signs of the holy. In this time, in every time, we hold our breath in awe, for this is Christmas Day. The sun of righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. So may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so knowing that we are forgiven, we can join our voices with the voices of the angels and sing their song of glory to God in the highest in Excelsis Deo. We're going to sing carol number 148. <laughs>
let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So we hear our readings. The first reading is at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy of the harvest, as people exult when divided plunder. For the yoke of your burden and the bar across the shoulders, the rod of the oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness for this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is Titus, chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impropriety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. <coughs> He, he it is who gave himself for us that we might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing Cower number 745.
Alleluia. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Alleluia. So hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, glory to you, you O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. For the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do sit down. Okay, who's opened their presents already? Yeah, I can see some hands at the back. Ruby, Poppy, have you opened your presents? Yes. Have you brought anything to show us? Uh, Come on, bring it, do you want to bring it down to the front? Let's have a look, see what, see what Father Christmas has brought you. Oh, wow. Christmas. What are these? Yes. Okay, how are we going to show people? Can you stand on your, can you, can you do a handstand or stand on your head? Well, I'll tell you what, stand up on here and wave your feet in the air so everybody can see these amazing, look, oh, don't fall off. Look at those. And you've got some of, oh my word. Let's, hang on, can you jump up there as well? Can you jump up there too? That's it, don't fall. If you put your foot up on there, look, everyone, oh, look at those. Ah. Didn't they do them in my size? 
No, no, they don't. No. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, that's... Anybody else? Anybody else had any, any fabulous presents yet? So you're all going home to... to OK, well, I'll keep this brief so that you can... <laughs> Christmas is one of those times, isn't it? And giving and receiving presents is... Well, it wouldn't be Christmas if we didn't have Christmas presents, would it? And even as we perhaps get older and the presents get smaller and a bit more predictable... <laughs> maybe, maybe not, maybe not. But that giving and receiving of gifts is part of what Christmas is for us. And Christmas is one of those times, isn't it, when we have all these other sorts of traditions. Has anybody got any, any Christmas traditions that you have to do to make it Christmas in your, in your house? Yes, what do you do? Um, we're not going to have Christmas until after the king's speech. Wow, so, you so you've got to wait until this afternoon, to, after the king has... The, yes, that's going to be strange, isn't it? That, that is a Christmas tradition that this year is going to be different. So you've got to wait. What's, what, what, do you, what do you do, Len? <laughs> Spicy sausage rolls for breakfast. <laughs> you've had it already. <laughs> what do you do? Pork pie for breakfast. Pork pie for breakfast. <laughs> okay. Pork pie is a bit of a thing, isn't it? They were, that's in Nazareth, they were <coughs> home. It wasn't necessarily 
carefully the damp and dark and dank and dirty stable that we might think Jesus was born in. And Christmas cards also give us ideas about what Christmas might or might not have been like. Of course, Christmas cards are sort of Victorian, so we have a particular view of what it was, and it's not necessarily that accurate. But in the region, there were shepherds. And the shepherds are important because the shepherds were the first people who were told the Christmas story. And a bit like the Easter story being entrusted to Mary, to Mary Magdalene in the garden, the Christmas story is entrusted to the shepherds. And they are told to go, and then they, they go home and they tell people. They are glorifying God, they are praising God, they're telling what is happening. And so they're really, really important people. And over the years, shepherds, I think, have a bit of a bad press because of, of sort of thinking of, of it being in a, in a stable and agricultural stuff and I know in some sense it's really muddy isn't it? It's not just out in the fields but in the gardens it was just mud. But to think of the shepherds as being sort of illiterate and a bit sort of um, grubby mm -hmm. and out there on the edges of respectability. To think of them being people we wouldn't necessarily want to sit next to in church. And yet, I think that does our shepherds a bit of a disservice. Of course, Jesus came and spent a lot of his time on the edges, on the edges of respectability, of society, of community. We must not forget that. But the shepherds were really important. Why I think they're important. If you look back into the Old Testament and the prophets, we get stories of shepherds. Ezekiel tells us about what happens to the people when the shepherds are bad. The leadership, the you know, political um, and uh, leadership in society abuses, exploits the people, likens it to bad shepherds not caring for the sheep. And God says, I will send you a good shepherd. I will send you someone who will care for you. And then if you think, King David, of whom Joseph is descended, Bethlehem is the town of David. David was a shepherd. Again, that wonderful story of Samuel going and looking for the new king. And he goes through all the tall, handsome, older brothers. And it's not them. And he says, is there another one? And they say, yes, it's, it's David, and he's out in the field with the sheep. David becomes the king. Think of the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And God talks about himself as a shepherd. And so we begin to see the shepherds as being really important, really respected almost. They were awake. And the whole of Bethlehem was asleep in the middle of the night. It was the shepherds who were awake. Do any of you work shifts nights? Don't you? Yeah. Yes, yep. Yeah. I used to work nights a long time ago. Or perhaps you've been, you know, awake with small children or, or sick people or, or just being awake at night. And there's that bit in the night when it is really hard to be awake. Your body just longs to sleep. But the shepherds were awake. They were out on the hillside. They were awake and they were watching. And they were watching the darkness. They were watching the sky. They were watching probably the fields in front of them. The same thing. They've been watching for, for nights ever since they've become shepherds. And in that ordinary scene, suddenly the heavens open and the angels sing. And because the shepherds are awake and watching, they are witnesses to the story of Christ.
being born. That story is entrusted to those shepherds. And they understand what's going on and they are obedient. And they go, they leave their sheep, which you wouldn't really do if you're a shepherd, but they leave their sheep and they go and find the Christ child. And again, something quite ordinary, a baby. Babies are born, well, all the time, aren't they? And in that culture, they all would have been wrapped up in swaddling bands. And in a busy, overcrowded town, quite a few of them wouldn't have been in, in sort of lovely beds. They'd have been, well, it's like when you put the baby in the bottom drawer of your chest of drawers. <laughs> again, something very ordinary. And yet, the shepherds were watching, they were waiting, they were obedient. And in doing so, they saw the divine in the ordinary. They were witnesses to that. Because it was them that went and told Mary and Joseph what was going on. Mary's pondering these words, turning them over like treasure, trying to work out what's happening. And the shepherds come with the next bit of the jigsaw to tell them, to help them understand what God is doing. And then the shepherds go back and they are praising God, they are glorifying God, they are telling each other, sharing, remembering, perhaps embellishing the story of what has happened to them that night. And just at Easter, we sometimes wonder what would have happened if Mary hadn't have gone back and told the others. Wonder would we be here today if the shepherds had just gone back to that hillside and not said a word. But because they went back and they shared the story, the story that we are now the latest chapter in, that story spread and grew and became our story too. So for me, I think the shepherds are a really good example of being very ordinary, doing a very ordinary job but in doing so in the way they're doing it, witnessing what God is doing, seeing the divine and I guess the mundane. And that's where we this Christmas can perhaps think of ourselves as the next lot of shepherds. Our lives are filled with traditions, with habits, with things we do, things we think about doing, things we just do because we've always done the ordinary and yet in that we too can glimpse the divine and see what God is doing. I could just stand here and think that Ruby and Poppy have just got new shoes for Christmas but they haven't. They've got something incredibly beautiful and special and that's a bit like the rest of our lives. Yeah, on one hand it could just be ordinary but if we look at it through the eyes of the shepherds, we too can glimpse what God is doing. And we too can respond and continue the telling of the story. And so a Christmas story that we are all very familiar with, and yet we now know we live in a country that is no longer majority Christian. And there are lots and lots of people who do not know the Christmas story. They might sort of perhaps recognise the scenes, but don't know the story. And so you've heard it this morning, and you too can go home and perhaps think who you can share that story with, who you can share the story of Christmas, the story of God coming to be with us, God's gift to us, the divine and the ordinary. How are you going to share it and be shepherds here today? Amen. So now let's stand and affirm our faith in the God who comes to live with us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, as we gather in prayer, let us pause amongst all the bustle and busyness and reflect on your wonderful gift to us. May Christ be born again in the life of each person here, and may your love fill the church and spread through the world. We pray for Christians everywhere, celebrating the birth of Christ at home or in church, and we give thanks for all those who teach and encourage. Lord, light of the world, hear our prayer. Lord God, as we listen to the joyful message of the angels, we too praise and worship you. We give thanks for the coming of Jesus into the world to change it forever and to save us all. Let the promise of peace and goodwill inspire and inform all who lead and guide. We bring before you the troubled parts of the world, remembering especially today Ukraine and the Middle East. We pray for all those around the world who are living with war and oppression. Lord, lover of all nations, where there is fighting and hatred, bring lasting peace and loving justice. Lord, light of the world, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray that we may share the eagerness of the shepherds. We pray that we too can overcome our fears and be as trusting and prepared to follow as they were. Give us grace to know and love you more deeply. May your light shine into our minds and hearts, and may we reflect it to the people around us. Let your love be in our homes as we gratefully enjoy time and good things with family and friends today. We remember absent friends and loved ones. We give thanks for all who are working today in order to look after others. Lord, light of the world, hear our prayer. Lord God, may we learn from the example of Mary and Joseph. May we, like them, hear God's word and be obedient to it even when things are difficult. 
as we hear of the hardships they faced. We bring before you all who are poor, hungry, or with no home, refugees, and all who feel unloved or unwelcome. We pray too for all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. For the people who find this time of year difficult because they are fearful of the future, sad or lonely, or simply overwhelmed. We bring before you those we pray for here in this benefice, including Terry Joyce, and any known only to ourselves. We pause to name them in our hearts and ask that they may feel your hope and healing. Lord, light of the world, hear our prayer. God with us, we welcome with joy the baby Jesus, and we give thanks that he continues to dwell with us through your Holy Spirit. We rejoice in your great love for us. We pray for those who have gone before us, and we commend them to that unfailing love. We remember those whose year's mind falls at this time, including Irene Robbins, Sophie Parr, Stanley Bullock, Kellyanne Knowles, Eric Price, Ted Giles, Joan Stevenson, and Janet Pope. Comfort those who grieve. Lord, light of the world, Hear our prayer. Jesus, newborn child of all time, we greet your birth with wide-eyed delight. You are precious beyond words, for our world needs your presence more than ever. Let kings bow down and all creation greet this holy moment, for you are God's gift silently delivered to every human heart. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We sing our next carol, number 266.
In your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the Word, a new light has dawned upon the world. You have become one with us that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, in earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread, the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. So all are welcome to come and receive from this altar. If you worship in other places normally and receive communion there, please receive it here too. If you would like to receive a blessing, just carry your order of service with you so there's no confusion. And in this church, since um, COVID restrictions lifted, we've reintroduced the shared cup, the chalice. And yet our understanding has been and is that the sacrament is received in full in the bread. So if you're not comfortable or confident or, or feeling that well, and you don't want to receive the chalice, just as you've received the bread, just get up and return to your seat. And that's all right, because you will have received the sacrament in full in the bread. But all are welcome, so come. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life.
in the Holy Child of Bethlehem. May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. You please stand. May the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So we sing our last carol, Joy to the world our Lord is come. go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory and thanks and praise to God.